Hi everyone, my name is Matt Jenkins and I'm a student of the Environmental Visual Communication Program through Fleming College. And today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the radial filter within Adobe's Lightroom. So I've queued up two photos here, um, as you can see, and I'm going to jump right into the Develop tab. Now you can see up here there's a bunch of different options. The one that we want is this one right here, the radial filter. So I'm going to click on it or you can also use short, uh, the shortcut Shift-M. And the purpose of the radial filter uh, is probably most often to adjust details or exposure in portrait photography. Um, so like this picture here, what I'm going to be using it for today is to um, expose the little girl's face a little bit more so that it gets a little bit brighter, um, and I might add some clarity to it as well. So I'm going to start by clicking on her face and dragging and you can see I'm creating a radial filter and I'm going to get it to about the size that I want and just readjust it here a little bit. There we go. So I'm going to leave it like that. It doesn't have to be exact. Um, but you can see I'll either be editing the details within this radial filter or sometimes you can even edit outside. So to tell which one is which, I'm first going to play with the exposure and I'm just going to drag it up so you can see that it's actually adjusting outside the circle, which is not what I want at first, but playing with the exposure first helps you determine what you're editing. So what I want to do is actually go down here and invert the mask. You can also hit the apostrophe key on your keyboard as a shortcut. Um, now, I don't want her face to be that exposed, obviously, so I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And I'm going to say I'm going to leave it right around there so. Now, I'm going to zoom in by hitting Command Plus so that you can see her face a little bit better. And I'm going to add some clarity here as well. So not much, but just a little bit. Now, if I hit H, which hides all the uh, overlays, you can see that there's quite a defined line where the radio filter is, and that's not something that I want uh, to be visible. So if I go to the right here again, there's this little slider, the feather slider. I'm going to increase that, and you can watch that defined line disappear as I increase it. However, the filter is still working effectively. So I'm going to create it like that, so you can't really see the edges anymore. And I'm going to zoom out again, so I'm going to hit Command minus, and you can see the filter like that. Now I'm going to hit H one more time so that you can see the overlays again. One other helpful tip when you're using radial filters, an easy way to adjust everything on the right here. So let's say I had adjusted more than just exposure and clarity, and rather than going through every single one and adjusting it if I wanted there to be more effect or less, I can go up here and hit this little arrow, which compresses that menu and gives you one slider, the amount slider. So right now it's at 13.8. If I open it up again, you can see my exposure is at 53 and my clarity is at 13. If I close that up, let's say I wanted to increase the amount, you can see on the picture that it's gradually getting brighter, brighter, brighter and getting more clear, clear, clear. Um, so if I increase it just a little bit like that, and bring it back down. You can see the exposure has increased and the clarity has increased. So whatever uh, sliders you have fiddled around with will all increase or decrease according to the amount. So I'm going to bring that back down here to where I want it. So I'll leave it around there. So now, and as you can see, if I click on this again, things have gone back to normal. Now another um, handy thing to do with a radio filter is to create more of a vignette effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another radial filter just by clicking and dragging. You can see I've created one here. So if I bring it down into the middle of the photo, I could do it manually by adjusting these all to the outside, out to the outside, or I can just do it easy way and hit command and double click there. So there it automatically fits the frame of the picture. Um, now in this case it would be cutting off her hat a little bit, which I don't want to do. Um, so I'm going to pull this out a little bit further and increase the size of the radial filter. And that way it's not affecting quite as much of the foliage. 
Now to create a vignette effect, I'm going to decrease the exposure. And as you can see, the outside corners are getting a lot darker. And again, it has that very defined line. So I'm going to create, um, I'm going to add some feathering here. And I probably don't want to have it that much different. So I'm just going to create a little bit, just like that. And there we go. So you can see if I hit H again to get rid of all the overlays, that's the effects of using the radio filter. Uh, now to see the before and after, you can hit this little toggle here, or you can also hit the back uh, backslash. So if I do that, you can see the before and the after. Uh, now another useful type of photo to use a radio filter on is for food photography because there's a lot of brown shapes, bowls, plates, uh, glasses, mugs, things like that. So if I wanted to brighten up the seeds here again, uh, I would just click and drag, and it's not showing up right now because I haven't hit H, and I'm currently hiding everything, which I don't want to do for you guys. So I'm going to increase this to be the size of the bowl roughly, and I'm going to readjust it so that it actually fits on the bowl. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be exact. When you're using the feathering, it can get rid of um, the hard lines that you might see. So I'm going to leave it about like that. And then I'm just going to add some exposure again, not to the outside, but to the inside. Not quite that much. Let's say right about there. Uh, and again, I'm going to play with the feathering. And there we have it. So that is my tutorial on using radial filters.